All right, welcome to what we're going to call Charles Law. And we've been experimenting with a couple of gas laws. We've done Dalton's Law. We're going to ignore that for the moment. And over the past couple of days, we've been graphing with Boyle's Law. And we should know by now that pressure and volume are inverse. That means if you increase the pressure, the volume decreases and vice versa. If you decrease the pressure, the volume uh, increases and vice versa. Uh, it works the other way around. If you squish down on the volume, you'll increase the pressure. If you re uh, expand the volume, you'll decrease the pressure. Today we're going to be looking at something called Charles Law, which is going to be looking at the same relationship between volume and temperature. And for the moment, what we're going to do is go to our simulation our gas law sim <clears throat> and what we have is a situation with uh, this um, sim where we are at 27 degrees Celsius we've got some gas bouncing around and in uh, accordance with kinetic molecular theory let's remember that kinetic molecular theory states that molecules are always in motion if we decrease the temperature we can visibly see the speed with which these molecules are moving begins to decrease. We also see the pressure decreasing, but we'll look at that one at another time. We also know that if we increase the temperature, excuse me, that the speed with which these molecules also begins to increase. Notice that our temperature gauge is rapidly climbing and the speed with which our molecules is moving is rapidly climbing. Uh, now this simulation is uh, a little limited in what it shows, so we're going to play around with this in a different way. But let's be paying some attention to the fact that as the temperature increases, this rate of molecular motion also increases. So what we're going to do is we're going to investigate what happens when we start to play around with temperature and its effect on volume. And so today, the object of our experimentation will be a marshmallow. And you're probably asking, why a marshmallow? So let's go take a look at the ingredients of a marshmallow. And there are four. Let's see what we can dig up. According to this, it says that marshmallows consist of four ingredients. And what we're interested in is the fact that one of the ingredients in a marshmallow is air. And so this is going to be the gas that we're going to subject to Charles' law, air. So what could we possibly do to a marshmallow that might influence the temperature of the air inside the marshmallow? I think it's time to take this microwave and put a bunch of marshmallows in it. So these marshmallows are normal sized. I bought these s'more shaped ones, so they're kind of flat. And let's take a picture of what they look like so we can compare it before and after. All right, here we go.
Yes, quite a noticeable difference. So our marshmallows went from this, which is before we put them in the microwave, to this, which was after the microwave. So clearly there is a connection between volume and temperature. Let's explore this further. So according to what we've just witnessed, it seems that as the temperature inside this uh, sample of combined gas increases and the molecular speed increases, as we saw uh, in our uh, demo here, let me find it. Obviously, as our temperature increases, the speed of our molecules also increases. What's that doing to our volume? Well, if it's a gas that's not completely confined, if it's a gas that is allowed to move around a bit, as the temperature increases and the kinetic molecular motion increases, volume also increases. Obviously, this works the other way as temperature decreases. Obviously, this is going to make our volume decrease as well. So welcome to Charles Law. And we're going to represent Charles Law mathematically. And it's a real simple formula. Charles Law says that V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Of course, V1 and T1 will be our initial temperatures and V2 and T2 will be our final pressure and temperature. However, we have a small problem because this mathematical formula is dividing volume by the temperature. And according to this, if we lower our temperature enough, let's pay attention to what's going on up here at uh, this temperature gauge. If we lower this enough, obviously lowering the temperature makes the speed of the molecules increases. But look what happens. As the temperature goes beyond zero degrees Celsius, it becomes negative. And that becomes a problem for this formula uh, because we can't be dividing by negative numbers. Solving for volumes with negative numbers would give us negative volumes, and that's not possible. So we can no longer use the Celsius scale. This is out. We can't use this because it can be negative. We can't have that. So we are going to use a new scale. Celsius scale, nope. We're going to use a new one. We're going to use what's called the Kelvin scale. And this is an interesting scale because if we take zero degrees Kelvin, actually we don't even say zero degrees Kelvin, we say, we say zero Kelvins. This is called absolute zero. And watch what happens when we bring our uh, gas all the way to zero degrees Kelvin. We're going to use these bigger ones because they are a bit more responsive to this. So watch what happens. We have our scale now not in Celsius, but in Kelvins. And watch what happens when we lower this speed from uh, 300 Kelvins, which is a little hotter than room temperature, all the way to zero degrees Kelvin. Obviously, speed is decreasing. Our temperature is decreasing. We're at 30 Kelvins. We're at 20 Kelvins. And notice that the lower our temperature in Kelvins, the slower our molecules move. Also notice that the, slow, the lower we get, the harder it is to get it there. We're at 5 Kelvins, 4. Here is 3. Here is 2. And finally, one Kelvin. Can we get it all the way to zero? It takes a while, but notice that as soon as we get all the way to zero Kelvins, takes a while right there. Molecular motion pretty much stops. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're going to call 
absolute zero. Absolute zero is where all molecular motion stops. There's a real easy way to get from Celsius to Kelvins. All we're going to do is we're going to take our temperature in degrees Celsius and we're going to add 273 and that gets us into Kelvins. So zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvins. Obviously 100 degrees Celsius is going to be 373 Kelvins. <clears throat> All right, let's take this for a spin and uh, see how this goes. We'll try this by getting our new temperature into Kelvins. Let's get an example of a problem you might expect to see. All right, so here's a problem that you can expect to see. Now we've got an object that has a set volume. It's at a initial temperature, and we're going to change the temperature to something else. So I know that Charles' law looks like this, V1. T1 equals V2 over T2. And we know that V1 and T1 are our initial volume and temperature. Let's set this up. And I like to establish my variables. I know that V1 initial volume is 50 milliliters. T1 is our initial temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. But we can't leave that in Celsius. We have to convert it to Kelvin. So we're going to add 273, and now this becomes 298 Kelvins. Our V2 is what we're trying to find, and we have a new temperature, T2 of 300 degrees Celsius. And we can't leave that in Celsius, so we're going to add 273 to get it into Kelvins. So this is 573 Kelvins. Let's plug everything into this equation and see what we get. So we're going to say V1, 50 milliliters. T1, 298 Kelvins equals V2. That's what we're trying to solve for. Divided by T2, that's 573 Kelvins. So we're going to do a little cross multiplying to get V2 by itself. And so what we have is V2 is going to be equal to 50 milliliters times 573 Kelvins divided by 298 Kelvins. And look what happens to our units. Kelvins cancel, leaves us in milliliters. And let's make sure that you all have a calculator handy. I happen to have my fancy one. And so let's take this out and we'll say, let me put this over here so it's not in anybody's way. Oops. Let's make that a little smaller. And what we'll say is 50 milliliters times 573. And let's divide that by 298. Here is our new volume in milliliters, 96.1 milliliters. And that's all you do. So take this for a spin, please.